Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another Gadget Friday. And man, if I got a cool piece of technology for you today. It's a Bluetooth transmitter. Now, you may already be thinking, Rick, what am I going to do with a Bluetooth transmitter? Well, let me explain what it does. And I bet by the end of the clip, you're already going to be thinking about ways you can use this in your own home. Because I love this product. It's so simple to use. And I've had it for a lot of years. And it's just really reliable. So let me start with the basics. Bluetooth technology was developed to make a high-speed connection between two smart devices to exchange data between them. Typically, it's short distances with low power. Now, you probably know it for most of the devices you're using to connect wireless headphones up to a stereo or a portable device, but it's matured a lot over those last 20 years, and it's now used to connect keyboards and cameras and mice and all kinds of other things that have to exchange data between the devices. And the name, it's kind of an interesting story, came from the development team who called it Project Bluetooth based on an old Nordic king that sort of organized the different tribes that were over there in that area of the world at the time. I'm sure nobody called him King Bluetooth to his face because you'd probably get a knife or something. But anyway, Bluetooth is based on that history, which I think is a wonderful history of somebody coming in and saying, look, you guys are all fighting. Wouldn't it be cooler if we just got together and stopped fighting? So anyway, Bluetooth is based on that. Now, it's gone through a lot of generational changes over the years, and I'll give you those now just briefly because it's important that when you're looking for a device like this, you make sure you've got the latest version of Bluetooth because there are some features built into it that some of the other devices that I've tested, like this one, are an older version of Bluetooth that really kind of hobbles what it can do for you. So you want to make sure you're on the latest version of Bluetooth. Now, I'll just give you the brief rundown of what those different versions were. So version one started in 2001, and that was basically just a basic connection topology. So all it did was connect two devices together. The next rev was 2.0, and that simplified the pairing of the two devices. So it made it really easy for you to connect them together. 3.0 came out in 2009, and that sort of experimented with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi getting together. And that was a huge problem. It didn't go very well. And they immediately jumped into 2014's version of 4.0, which was really um, low power with a wider bandwidth. And it also had a lot more data exchange between the devices. The latest version, 5.0, and that's based on an increased range so you get a much wider range out of it whereas typically you're getting I don't know 30 feet 10 feet maybe if you're lucky between devices now you can go hundreds of feet between them this doesn't go quite that far but it's battery powered but it also included low latency technology aptX aptX which is really important if you're using these watching TV because if you connect this up to your TV and you've got the headphones on you don't want to be watching TV where the audio is a couple of seconds behind the lip movements because as humans we pick up on that stuff and you want it to be in sync so this is all based on five dollars Bluetooth technology, which is the latest and greatest. It includes the aptX. Um, it also includes the increased bandwidth and the increased range. So this thing will work um, up to 10 meters away. So 30 feet, which allows you to watch a TV program, get up during the TV program like I do, walk to the kitchen, make a ham sandwich, get back to your chair, and still watch TV without it clipping out. Some of the other devices I tested that were based on 4.0 had synchronicity issues where it wouldn't keep the lips in sync. Also, if you turned your head a little bit with the headphones on, you might lose the audio. So having that increased bandwidth allows the data exchange better between them, and it also gives you that synchronicity you need for watching TV. It's also an incredibly powerful device, so you can run this thing for 16 hours on a single charge, which is pretty cool. It also charges over USB-C, which is the modern standard that we charge all of our newer devices on. Some of the older devices used micro USB. Not that big a deal, but you got to carry an extra cable with you. And I use this thing all over the place. So the use cases for this are pretty wide. It's essentially allowing you to connect older devices to newer devices. So let's say, for example, you've got some of the brilliant headphones that are out today. These are the Bose. This is the uh, Apple product. And these are both Bluetooth enabled and you've got an older TV system like most of us have, you probably don't have Bluetooth incorporated in the TV. Now you can buy a dedicated Bluetooth transmitter for the TV, but they're expensive, they're big, they're ugly. This guy has a three and a half millimeter plug in the end of it that you can plug into the headphone jack on your TV. And for 16 hours, this will broadcast the Bluetooth audio, turning the analog into digital over Bluetooth to these headphones. So if you're traveling a lot like I am, you can plug this into a hotel TV, you can lay back in the bed and watch your TV program, not annoy the neighbors until the wee hours of the night. Where this becomes really important is if I'm watching a monster show or some kind of spy show where there's a lot of gunshots and monsters roaring and stuff down in the den with my son and my wife goes up to bed early because she's not into the monster shows, I can plug this thing in and I can listen to it on the headphones and not annoy my wife. The cool thing is this will pair with two sets of headphones simultaneously so I can use these, my son can use the uh, Apple products and we're both watching the TV, screaming and laughing and all the rest of it without uh, generating any noise upstairs to my wife. The other cool thing about this is that it also includes a second plug right here. Now where would you ever see two plugs like that? 
on an airplane. That's right. So I spend a lot of time on airplanes and I'm constantly plugging in my headphones, either the monitor in front of me or to the armrest, and they get tangled. They get tangled in stuff I'm doing. I'm putting a tray down. People are trying to get in and out of the aisle. So it's a headache to have that. I know it seems like a small thing, but having this plugged into the monitor on the seat back and having my Bluetooth headphones on just eliminates all that nonsense. I'll get, also get better audio on that because I'm not fiddling around with the plug all flight trying to make sure that it's perfectly connected. So it's nice that they give you both of these and it's really easy to tell which one you're using because on the back they have one dot and two dots. The one dot means that's the one you use for stereo input. You only need one of the plugs up. The other one is two dots. Now, a couple other cool things that this one has that a lot of the others don't have. For starters, you wanna make sure you're on Bluetooth version five. Some of the older ones, I'm not going to name names, but this one is on Bluetooth 4. You don't get the latency issues. In other words, it doesn't have APTX. It doesn't have that high bandwidth transmission. It doesn't have the increased range. So something older like this will give you problems if you're further away from your TV, maybe 10 feet. So if you sit that close, you're going to be fine. But if you're further away, it's going to blank out on you. The other thing I don't like about this one is those prongs stick up beyond the end of it. So when you slide it in your pocket or a bag, these are always going to get bent or broken. And I've had a couple of these that I used before I actually upgraded to this one that have caused me issues in the field. Now, this product is made by a company called RHA, and they're a, a brilliant little engineering team out of Glasgow, Scotland. Now, if you don't know where Glasgow, Scotland is, I didn't know either. It's a port city on the River Clyde. Now, I've never been to Scotland. I've been all over Europe. I've never been to Scotland, so I absolutely want to get to Scotland with my drones and all my other high-tech stuff, and that sounds like a beautiful place to, to visit when I'm over there, but that engineering team designs everything from scratch. A lot of the companies that build products like this sort of take somebody else's product, maybe change the form factor of it a little bit, build a case for it, put their name on it, and then sell it. They didn't really develop anything. They're basically two-stepping other products that were developed. The RHA team makes a lot of these high-quality engineering products like this audio adapter, this Bluetooth adapter, and they design every aspect of it to their specification. So they'll look at the transmission module, the connection module, the audio grooming module, if you will, the Bluetooth technology, and built a really cool product. It's not very expensive, but for me, I carry this with me everywhere. If I've got, not everywhere, but when I'm traveling, I can use it in the car. If I'm gonna be talking there, I've got the audio coming out of the car. I plug the this into the headphone jack and I can put my headphones on or one earbud in. I use it in the hotel rooms where I'm broadcasting from a TV. I use it at home all the time, whether I'm downstairs or upstairs. If there's an audio jack in the TV, just plug it in, you're good to go and you can broadcast Bluetooth. You can also use this with home stereo systems that have a quarter inch jack on it and you can get a small cable that'll convert that quarter inch headphone jack into a three and a half millimeter female that you can plug this into. They're like four bucks for a cable and you can actually broadcast from a stereo to the headphones or even to Bluetooth speakers in another room, which is pretty cool. So it's an incredibly versatile device. And again, you might be looking at it going, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use that, but just think about some of those use cases I talked about and I'm sure you'll find a use for it around the house. Now in the kit, which is kind of cool, they include obviously a um, instruction manual here that explains exactly how to do it. It's super simple to pair it up with devices. Also some warranty information and how to handle Handle it. They even include a nice little USB-A to USB-C cable so you can charge the device. It only take me about, I think it took me about an hour and a half to get it to full charge. Once it's charged 16 hours of use on the device. The thing I do like about it, which a lot of the other devices don't really pay attention to, is that there's not a lot of leakage on this because if you charge it, it typically holds a charge longer than some of the other devices where if I charge it on a Friday and fly on a Sunday, I may have to recharge it before I head out. It's always good to top it off anyway, but if you're on a long flight, um, you can also plug it in and charge it from the a plane if you, you know, you're flying in as well, if you've got a cable with you. So you can sort of charge it as you're using it, which is nice. And that's what I do when I'm using it on the TV. I'll plug a short cable in. Typically on the back of the TV, there's like a USB-A connection. I'll plug it in there, run the cable up to this on the USB-C and plug it in. Then I can run it continuously. But anyway, that's the device. I like the fact that it will let me pair two, two headphones to it. It remembers the last, I think it's 16 headphones that are on it. So if I use this one, turn it off and then use this one, it immediately picks up on that linking. Once I've paired them together, the memory's in the device. So that's pretty much it. I like it a lot. I know it's kind of a nerdy thing, but it's one of those little gadgets that I have around and there's always a use case for it when I'm at a party or I'm traveling or one of those things. If I happen to have it with me, it just makes all the difference connecting up two different devices over this Bluetooth connection. And it's just a really cool gadget to have. So hopefully you find this clip helpful. I like this product. I've got a link below if you want to go check it out on Amazon. There's a bunch of them on that site, but this is the one that I've settled on after I've tested all the other ones that are out there. Again, I like this one an awful lot. I've used it for a couple of years and finally transitioned over to this one to get the Bluetooth 5, which I think is a major improvement. But if you have any questions about this, 
let me know and I'll answer them in the comments below as best I can. Um, I'm doing a lot of these Gadget Friday clips, so please give me your comments on that as well. If you're enjoying it, let me know because I've got a lot of stuff planned that I think is pretty cool along this gadget scheme. And it's stuff that I use and things that I find interesting that I hope you find interesting. And if I'm talking about something you don't like, just move on to the next clip. But if it's something you're thinking, hey, that looks pretty cool, check the clip out and uh, you know support the channel if you use the link below. So that's pretty much it. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, stay nerdy. Thank you.